What's up, San Francisco? What's up, Team Tobias? Lane Hama here with Ann Rose for quelling your query conundrums. Ann, why don't you take us away? All right. So as I said last time, which was actually just like two minutes ago for us, but or actually 14 minutes ago for us, but brand new for you today is that we're recording these. And so we're in the same clothes. Just go with it. I don't know what to tell you. So we just live in this tiny little box anyway. And also thanks for like shout out to San Francisco. That's my hood. You know, I'm from the Bay Area in California. So I didn't know that. You didn't know that? No, I knew you were in California. I literally just remembered it the other day because something about Texas came up and I was like, oh, she doesn't seem Texas. And then I was like, oh, yeah, she's from California. And this was a whole big process in a matter of like a nanosecond. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, I saw actually recently I saw a uh, like it was like a one of those things like how Texan are you? Give yourself a point for all the things that you've done. And it was basically just eating a bunch of Tex-Mex food, which I, I'm not sure how much that makes you a Texan just by eating Tex-Mex. But I mean, Tex-Mex is good, but like Mexican food is good. When did you move to Texas? Ten years ago. Oh, OK. You might be a little Texan then. I mean, it's possible. I mean, I do like the word y'all. I think y'all, though, is a good word. That's true. Have you always said y'all, or is it has been since you got to Texas? No, it's definitely a Texas thing that okay. I picked up on, for sure. So okay. but I, I like the inclusivity of y'all. So if Texas only understood how woke it is <laughs> by using y'all, they probably would, you know, not like it so much, but I like it. I like y'all. I think it's very. You all. That's, that's what it is. It's a contraction for you all to oh, mansplain. Yeah. I'd like to word mansplain. Wordsplain? Wordsplain. <laughs> Wordsplain. It's a good word. Okay. Um. Yeah. Take us away. All right. So today, because we just got off on a tangent, but you know, you enjoy us just mambling around, don't you? People watching yes, us. Yes. Of course I'm they sure do. They do. I'm sure they do. All right. We're gonna talk about our next query, uh, which was sent in by one of you lovely listeners. Thank you so much. We appreciate you for sending these in and allowing us to critique and help you with your queries on air. So let's get to it. Dear agent. Title is a 99,000 word dark, I'm sorry, a 99,000 word adult dark fantasy with strong romantic elements and a YA crossover appeal. It is a standalone with series potential written in multi POV and features queer representation. This book mixes the forbidden romance of this woven kingdom by Tahare Mafi with the lyrical prose of A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson and the dark ambiance of Penny Dreadful. I forgot to give you the disclaimer that if I pronounce things wrong, I apologize. Because this is now a fantasy, so I'm probably going to say a lot of things wrong. So here we go. After his father's murder, Kieran Thorne struggles to keep peace throughout his kingdom. But his biggest concern is loving a woman he cannot have. As a wielder of sacred moon magic, Kieran possesses status but is forbidden to take a low, a lowly sorcerer as his romantic partner. Despite his best efforts to resist it, he has fallen for the charismatic and sly sorceress Fae. Now one of the kingdom's rulers, Kieran vows to repeal the law that keeps him and Fae apart and unjustly imprisons her kind. But the law can't be dismantled without the other ruler's approval. Rulers who are ruthless enough to behead Kieran for his throne and resources, especially if they unearth his weakness, Fay. To protect Kieran, Fay infiltrates the enemy court, hunting for clues about his father's murder. To free Fay, Kieran sets out to gain the ruler's support in changing the law, striking deals with unlikely allies. If they fail, Kieran stands to lose his love. Faye stays condemned to a life of servitude and both risk their beloved territory falling into a cruel ruler's hands. Then there's the bio and the closing and the end. So that is, the, that's the pitch. Should we, should we go back through it? Yes. All right. Let's start at the top. Dear agent, title is a 99,000 word, adult, dark, fantasy with strong romantic elements and YA crossover appeal. It is a standalone with series potential written in multi POV and features queer representation. This book mixes the forbidden romance of This Woven Kingdom by Tahare Mafi and the lyrical prose of A Dowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson and the dark ambiance of Penny Dreadful. So that's our opening. Thoughts? I loved Penny Dreadful. 
Marshall, check it. I love Penny Dreadful, and it ended way too soon. I'm not seeing how a dark adult romanticy basically can have why a crossover appeal yeah I, I mean i don't do those genres so is that am i wrong there i mean i think that you can have obviously there's a lot of fantasy that can cross over between adult and ya right that that's not not neither here nor there but i'm not yeah. quite sure after reading the rest of the pitch that i see the crossover potential so much like would a ya reader potentially read this Yes, but I I definitely see it strongly and firmly sitting on an adult shelf. Yes. So I'm not sure. I'm not sure I see the crossover element. Like you were saying. No. Another thing um, I noticed, it says it features queer representation, which excellent. Love it. But I don't really see it in the pitch. So I'm not sure how that comes into play. Maybe it's a side character. And this is the cynic in me, in that when I see representation, how much? Is it a queer story, or is this someone who wants quote-unquote diversity points? Because I get those queries where people say, I've written all these different characters, but they're out of my culture. And is this... And for, I don't know why people hate own voices, the term now, but they do. I mean, is it own voices? Yeah, I don't know. I just, for me, I love good queer representation, obviously, but I'm just not seeing it in the query itself. And so I, I'm not exactly. quite sure where the connection is. So um, I guess I would either like to see it in the pitch itself on how that comes through, or if you can't, if it's not really relevant to the main storyline, maybe it's not something to add in, in the pitch. I don't know. So yeah. that's probably subjective and what the author wants to do with that, they can. I also like the reference to Penny Dreadful. So I thought that's really, really yeah. great there. Love that um, show. We will go to the meat. So after his father's murder, Kieran Thorn struggles to keep peace throughout his kingdom, but his biggest concern is loving a woman he cannot have. As wielder of sacred moon magic, Kieran possesses status, but is forbidden to take a lowly sorceress as his romantic partner. Despite his best efforts to resist it, he has fallen for the charismatic and sly sorceress Faye. So for me, it, it makes it feel like this has happened after his father's murder, the way it's stated, right? Yeah. Like, so did all of these things take place after his father's murder or did all of these things take place and then his father was also murdered? Does that make sense? Yeah. And a technical critique is the name Faye. I think in a fantasy world, using the name Faye can be distracting because we literally last week, which was actually five minutes ago, had a story with a fae, as in the fae fairy creatures. So simpletons like me are all jumbled up. Yeah. I mean, it's spelled F-A-Y-E. That's how you would say fae, right? Yes, that's fae. Okay. Because that could just be me reading poorly. <laughs> no, I have a Aunt Fay, and that's how she spelled it. Excellent. Hello, Aunt Fay, if you're listening. <laughs> She's been dead for 300 years, and I don't, I never met her. She could still be listening. Ah, shit, you're right. I'm you sorry, know. Aunt Faye. So, thanks, Aunt Faye. Okay, so, yeah, I, I think there's a little, like, I think there's trying to be some setup here, which I think is great, right? But I think we need to, like, kind of massage this and move things around so we kind of understand the events of things. Because the next sentence in the next paragraph is now one of the kingdom's rulers. But now why? Like, how? Like, why? why did this happen now? Is it because of his father's death? So is the father's death now connected to him becoming the ruler? Because if so, I think that those two things need to line up just a little bit more. So it should be like Kieran Faye struggles with his struggles to keep peace in his kingdom. He loves this woman, right? But he's not really allowed to. But after his father's murder, he's now the ruler. And so therefore, he's going to try to repeal this law. I think that kind of makes the elements of the story line up a little bit more and maybe that's not how it happened i'm just making assumptions uh, i was thrown off by the kingdom and all the rulers and the ruler if i recall correctly isn't named so there's a lot of rulers the kingdom is a country a kingdom ruled over by a king kieran is the king now so why are other rulers why this one other ruler, if it's a kingdom, can't he just make change the laws himself? 
let's read the paragraph again. So now one of the kingdom's rulers, so one of the kingdom's rulers, so he's not, okay, now one of the kingdom's rulers, Kieran vows to repeal the law and keeps him and Faye apart and unjustly imprisons her kind. So now he's one of them. So I guess there's multiple, but we'll keep reading. But the law cannot be dismantled without other rulers' approval. So there's multiple rulers. Rulers who are ruthless enough to behead Kieran for his throne and resources, especially if they unearth his weakness, which is her, which is Faye. I guess he's just one of the many. So I'm thinking of it like as in a boardroom. And like, so there's, this is the board of directors. But they say his throne, meaning he's, to me, that means he's the head honcho. He's Is he the CEO? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, well, part of succession worked because we know the dynamics of the company. We don't know the dynamics of the country. Yeah. I mean, why do rulers have to agree for the laws? In this world, I mean, I'm not sure. So, yeah, yeah, the king makes the law. The, I mean, I'm thinking about in England, you know, there's the queen. Queen makes the laws. All the dukes and duchies and baronesses, they they serve the queen. So who's the king? If his father was the king, why does he just become a ruler when he should be the king? Well, technically, it doesn't say his father was the king. It just says his father was murdered. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then I, I, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Then don't listen to anything I just said. No, but I think it's fair. I think there's assumptions being made, right? Like, so when we read this, we're going to make assumptions about the story, right? Yes. We're going to make assumptions based on all the other fantasies that we see coming through in our inbox, all the ones that we have read in the past, and all of those things come to play as we read this. So obviously subjective reading, but we're going to end up putting our own context into things. And so while you heard this, you immediately thought, okay, Kieran's dad was the king, and now he's the king. And so what is what how is this working so i mean it might be interesting or good for the author to know that that is how this is being interpreted right so if yes. that is not the intention is that's not the power dynamic of the story then it's good for them to know in order to make changes so it can be clearer once that whoever next reads it okay last paragraph and then we'll wrap it up so to protect kieran fey infiltrates the enemy's court hunting for clues about his father's murder they uh, and, okay to free Faye, Kieran sets out to gain the ruler's support in changing the law, striking deals with unlikely allies. If they fail, Kieran stands to lose his love. So Faye stays condemned to a life of servitude and both risk their beloved territory falling into a cruel ruler's hands. So that is at the end of it. I think because we don't know who the cruel ruler is, that the stakes don't really have that kind of oomph or power that it could for the overall story. I also think that the way that this is framed, it feels very romantic -y, right? Like the romance feels front and center of this story, not really the fantasy element of the story or the fantasy part. So I would probably pitch this as romantic -y if this is, I don't think it's just a strong romantic element. I think that the romance is the story. That's what I'm getting yeah. from this query. Um, it's driving the plot forward. That's what it seems like, is what's driving the plot forward. If it's not, then... Again, some reframing of the story might be great. I'm not sure even who the enemy's court is. I, I mean, name your antagonists. Yeah, I think it might be important to understand who the antagonist is. I think possibly because there's multiple rulers, it might be difficult. But there has to be something that gives us some sort of clue here. And maybe, oh, I'm, I bet you, I know, I bet you one of the actual antagonists is probably one of those twists where you're not really sure they're the antagonist until you get there. Does that make sense? Like they probably yes. seem like an ally, but at the end they end up being the antagonist. And so maybe the author doesn't want to tell us who it is in the query. Oh, that drives me nuts. You have to tell me because otherwise I'm here like. Who is the faceless ruler? What? It's a ruler. We don't know who the ruler is. The ruler's kept his identity secret. Again, I'm guessing here. So perhaps that is what it is. Perhaps it's not what it is. We have to just go off what we say, right? What we see here. So yeah, I'm not quite sure who the antagonist is, what they're really fighting against. I mean, they're, they're trying to get this law changed so they can be together. So it does feel very romance driven, which is fine. And romanticy is having its moment. So I feel like if you're gonna, if it's gonna go there, you, you could just go there with it. And I think that's perfectly fine. Still not really quite seeing the queer element of here of this, which I think I would really love to see. Not that it has to be queer. Not every story has to be, but I always love a queer story. <laughs> 
I, I, I mean, if you're going to say it's queer, you have to make it queer. So I would, I would really like to see that. So yeah, so I'm just not, I'm not quite sure I'm following necessarily all of the plot lines and how this is, how this is going out. So I said it in the last episode, I'm going to say it again here. In your query, you want to know who the main character is, what do they want, what are their goals, what is, uh, what stands in their way, what are the obstacles, and then what happens if they fail, what are the stakes? And so I think we have a lot of the framework here for this, but it's, it's not as clear as it could be. And I'm really seeing Kieran's role in this. I'm not really seeing Faze. And it says it's a multi-POV. So I would really love to understand um, what her part of the story is and how and how she's going to bring in. And maybe she's not part of the multi-POV. Maybe there's lots of points of view. I'm, But we're only getting these two. It makes it feel like it's just going to be that dual. But I bet you there's probably more. It's probably more complicated than, than what we're seeing. So author, good job. This sounds like a very complex world that you've put together. So bravo to you for that. I think there's a lot of great elements in here. The romance is obviously very strong, which is awesome. And I think romanticy is definitely having its moment right now. So if that is really what the core of the story is, I think you can lean into that even a little bit more. And I think you would be fine here. Give us a little bit more of like who the enemy is and what really is at stake here. And I think that you could have a really good slam dunk on a query letter. So hope that helps. All right, Anne Rose, take us away. All right, that's Anne Rose and Leigh Hymott with Calling Your Query Conundrums. If you have a query that you are conundruming about, why don't you send it to us at our email below, and uh, we will see what we can do, and we can help you out. So hopefully that was helpful. If you think it was or wasn't, please leave us a comment. Like, subscribe, and can you mow my lawn? Maybe mow my lawn. And then... Uh... <laughs>